the only thing we've differentiated so far, the powers have been integers. Well, that means we're limited to polynomials when you think about it. There's so many more functions than just polynomials. So now we're going to look at, well, how do we handle powers that are non-cardinal? Remember, cardinal numbers are the, the counting numbers. So what happens if we get something like this? Y equals 1 on X. All right. Function X is 1 on X. So we go back to first principles to see what we can do. Function X plus H would be 1 on X plus H. Sub that into our formula. And let's tidy that up. We get a common denominator of x times x plus h, but that moves to the bottom of the fraction. So on the bottom, we now have hx, x plus h. On the top, we have x minus all of x plus h. The x minus x cancels. We get minus h. Ah, now the h's will cancel. We get minus 1 on x, x plus h. I can substitute the 0 in now without any problems and I end up with minus 1 on x squared. But what that's telling me is that, hang on a sec, I can use the same rule, because imagine if I did it this way. If we said, instead of being 1 on x, we wrote it in index form, x to the negative 1, and we still use the same idea. If I bring that power to the front, I'll get minus 1 out the front, lower the power by 1, negative 2, well, that's in index form. If I take it out of index form, it's minus 1 on x squared. So our rule works not only for positive numbers, it works for negative numbers as well. What about ones like this then, where we have fractional indices? Will it work for that? Okay, so we have our square root of x is function x, square root of x plus h, function x plus h. Sub that into our first principles formula. And this is one, and you might recall seeing ones like this in that exercise we did on limits, where we'll rationalise the numerator rather than rationalise the denominator. Okay, so the top of the fraction, difference of two squares, so I get x plus h minus x. The bottom of the fraction, h, root x plus h plus root x. But the top will tidy up to be h, the h's will now cancel. And we've got something we can substitute into. We'll end up with 1 on 2 root x. Okay. But had I changed it to index form, what would have happened? So x to the power of half. I would have brought down the power a half. Subtracted 1, negative a half. Well, a half x to the negative half, yes indeed, that is 1 on 2 root x. So we don't need any new formulas at all. It'll still work. We just bring the power down, subtract one from the power. Okay, okay, first example then. 3x plus 1 on x squared. So I get something like that. Then the 1 on x squared, I'll just change the index form. And now we can differentiate. So we get 3, and it'll be minus 2x to the negative 3. Yeah, that's how a, a mere mortal might leave their answer. But us super mathematicians... We'll change that 2x to the negative 3 to be 2nx cubed. I, I just tend to like to, to answer the question in the format they ask the question. So if they've written it as a fraction, I'll, I'll give my answer as a fraction. x squared root x. Okay, it changed that to index form. So we've got x squared times root x. Uh, that's 2 and a half, but it's an improper fraction. That's 5 on 2, x to the 5 on 2. Bring down the power, 5 on 2, subtract 1, we get 3 on 2, mere mortal answer, super mathematician answer, 5 on 2, x root x, x root x. Third example, uh, again, let's put that in index form, ah, but now we're going to have to use our chain rule, and this is where the, the chain rule comes in really handy, because how would we expand out 5x plus 4 to the power of negative 2? Well, can't do that. So having the chain rule allows me to, to differentiate something like this. So a bit of anarchy. Bring down the power. Lower the power, goes to negative 3. Diff the inside, it's 5. 5 4s are 20. Mere mortal answer. Super mathematician answer. Minus 20 over 5x plus 4, all cubed. And certainly these ones 
the uh, the chain rule is going to come in very handy. Because again, if I put that in index form, we get x squared minus 3 to the power of a half. How do you expand that out? So differentiate it. Bring down the power, lower the power, minus a half. Diff the inside 2x. Half times 2x gives me x. Me a mortal answer. Soup. But mathematician answer. X over the square root of x squared minus 3. So our chain rule opens up a whole lot of possibilities there. Alrighty. So 9f and 9g are on differentiating those.